Ryan Nitsch. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Morning. Good Let's... morning. We've been having some technical difficulties this morning. Uh, so hopefully this time around, we are good to go. So if you got a bunch of emails that we are live like seven times, I, I apologize. The the uh, Spreaker is kind of glitching this morning. Okay, Brian, I see you on the chat board. Yep, good I'm in there. And it still says we're live. I think we're good. So let's get right to it. Donnie, thanks for, for being here with us again. How's your morning going? Welcome, buddy. It's going pretty good, yeah. Very nice. All right, well, let's open our Bibles and get right to it here. Second Samuel chapter 4 in the New Living Translation. Uh, and Brian, you want to do just a quick just like two minute recap on just kind of the last chapter that we read on kind of where we are right now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, the last chapter, basically we had a, uh, we had a war, right? Saul, uh, you know, a um, little bit of a war, a little bit of a history of David, you know, where he's from. Um, David's sons were born in Hebron. Of course, then Abner. Remember Abner? He was uh, second in command, right-hand man of Saul. You know, and then he gets mad be at, at uh, uh, Joab, right? Joab was the the king or the the military leader of Israel. If you remember correctly. So now Joab and and Abner part ways. Abner's like, forget you, Joab. I'm going to put David in command. I'm going to put him as king. Whatever I do. God forbid I do anything else. Then they had a little scuffle. He left. He joined sides with David. Um, they had a uh, they had yeah. an incident, big time beef. Yeah, big beef. And at Joab, uh, in, if you remember one one um, important detail, Abner killed Joab's brother in self defense, but in a war. You remember, oh, oh, uh, Joab's brother was fast, like running like a gazelle, was chasing him. And he said, hey, hey, just turn around. We're, we don't need to be bitter against each other. We're brothers in the Lord. We're Israelites. And Joab's brother said, nope. So Abner went ahead and killed him, put a spear through him or sword through him, his stomach. And Joab finally heard about it and got mad, tricked Abner and, and David's men called Abner in in secret meeting and and that's excuse me that's when he stabbed Abner in the uh, in the stomach with his sword um yeah. in revenge for Joab for uh Joab killed uh, Abner in revenge for the brother but he tricked him then David cursed Joab said you and your family awful we have no part in this we have no guilt in this so that's about where we're at David it, you know, wiped his hands after he got murdered. After Joab murdered Abner, he's like, Abner's great. Joab's terrible. Here we are. Uh, after he mourned uh, the death of Abner. And now we're into uh, Samuel chapter 4. Sam Second Samuel 4. Yeah, and we made the point yesterday, Brian and um, Donnie. I know that you weren't here yesterday, but we made the point that jo what Joab did was was straight murder. It was premeditated murder. It wasn't battle um, death. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't uh, David versus Goliath. It wasn't strategic military um, casualties. Even in the title of New Living Translation, I know this is probably not King James, but it says Joab murders Abner, you know, and David's upset because, he, you know, jo Joab never came to David, never showed him that respect. Joe, I've never, you know, went to God first and asked, what shall I do? Um, so, yeah, this, what do you think about that, Donnie, on kind of where we are here? We're leading up to uh, <clears throat> David being crowned king of all Israel. So there's a lot of intrigues going on, isn't there? A lot of drama. Mm. Tons of it. Yes, there is. Yeah, it's a weird time where everybody knows that David is the king of Israel, but he's not been crowned yet. You know, you had Saul, and even people were like, okay, Saul is the king, but definitely David's next. And then all of a sudden, you know, Saul uh, kills himself, unfortunately. And then this guy, uh, Ish, 
Ishbosheth. Ishbosheth, yeah. Ishbosheth comes in and he's like, I'm king. And I think everybody deep down is kind of like, no, you're not. <laughs> well, the people, though, the people, they proclaimed him, right? He, he's not anointed king. Oh, yeah, you're right. The people. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of people deep down know that he's not the anointed. Of Absolutely. So here we are as we pick right up. to be expected, you know, after Saul's death, there's no clear legitimate ruler for Israel. Saul begins his reign in Hebron. Right. It's a, yep. But Abner, yeah. Abner has a, oh, I'm sorry, not Asher. Ishbosheth has a claim, obviously, because he's Saul's son, and uh, David has something to say about that. And in the beginning of Second Samuel, with all this drama and intrigue, you see throughout the whole book, there's a lot of intrigue in the royal court. And David doesn't quite exactly have a very peaceful life within his inner circle, you know? Yeah, we're going to find out. His, well, you know, it has to do with uh, our, our decisions. When we veer off from the plan of God, you know, a lot of times it causes rifts in our life. But hey, you know, he uh, he stays the course. That's you know. It he, certainly is. Uh, it certainly is exciting when you read this and you haven't, you know, for the first time and you and you read these stories. The truth is always better than fiction, you know. Sure. When yeah. I wait, when I when I, when you read, when you read something and it's really good, without a doubt, you know, the true, the truth, the history of things. Is always more eye-opening, entertaining, <clears throat> learning than than an actual fiction. You know, not that I don't love fiction, but you know, it all stems from here. All these stories, all these lessons that we learn. You know, you know, you said something, Donnie, a while back that said, you know, every story, every are all of our ideas. They all come from the Bible. It is so true. It's so true. And it is literally the most dramatic writing and history of all time. And inspiring. Mm -hmm. Donnie, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole because we pretty much did a whole show on this the other day. But I got to get your opinion on the Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. Book of Eli. Have I seen that? What is that? Uh, oh, that's a good movie, man. Yeah, yeah, he ends up being blind, you know, last Bible on, on planet Earth because they burned all the other Bibles. And his journey is to get it to the the publishing corporation out there in San Francisco. Yeah, that's a great movie. Remember that scene? What was that? When he's in the bar in the beginning of the movie and he's fighting all the the, the, the murderers. He, well, he grabs that guy and he smashes his head and <laughs> he says, you will be judged or... You will be held accountable for the things that you have done. Well, that gives you chills, doesn't it, man? Oh, it does. And then, he, and then he says something. Uh, I forget the actual verse, but it's from the, it's from Genesis, obviously. Uh, Out of the dust we were created, into the dust we shall return. Mm. And then he just starts cutting off heads. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's on a journey. Uh, that is directed by God. That's great. Yeah, great movie. Second uh, Samuel chapter four. Uh, I'll pray it in here. Um, dear Lord, give us, open our eyes, open our ears, tear our wall down in front of us, and let us completely 100% absorb and take in your word this morning. We fall to our faces on the dirt in front of you. We live for you. We are alive for you, and we walk with Jesus. That's the narrow path that we love so dearly. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Cool. Uh, let's see. It's a pretty short chapter here. I, I don't know what you guys think. I mean, Don, do you want to read down to like nine, and then uh, Brian Nige can slam dunk it? Sure. Yeah. When is Bosheth, Saul's son? heard about Abner's death at Hebron. He lost all courage. And all Israel became paralyzed with fear. You guys hear me okay? Yeah. 
Now there were two brothers, Bana and Rekab, who were captains of Ishbosheth's raiding parties. They were sons of Ramon, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, who lived in Biroth. The town of Biroth is now part of Benjamin's territory because the original people of Beroth fled to Gittim, where they still live as foreigners. Saul's son, Jonathan, had a son named Mephibosheth, who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled, but as she hurried away, she dropped him and he became crippled. Mm. One day, Rekeb and Bana, the sons of Ramon from Beroth, went to Ishbosheth's house around noon as he was taking his midday rest. The doorkeeper, who had been sifting wheat, became drowsy and fell asleep. So Rekeb and Bana slept past her. They went into the house and found Ishbosheth sleeping on his bed. They struck and killed him mm. and cut off his head. Whoa. Then, yeah, they wanted to make sure he was dead, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of broke up there too, Donnie, internet wise. They struck and killed him and cut off his head. Whoa. Yeah. Then, taking his head with them, they fled across the Jordan Valley through the night. When they arrived at Hebron, they presented Ishbosheth's head to David. Look, they exclaimed to the king, here is the head of Ishbosheth, the son of your enemy Saul, who tried to kill you. Today the Lord has given my Lord, the king, revenge on Saul and his entire family. Well, they wanted to make sure he was dead, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, before reading verse nine, I'm just going to cover the screen with my 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 hand here so I don't cheat. But I don't know how David's going to take this. I really don't. I I, I have not. What if David already knows everything about that? Well, first of all, it's going to be interesting to see how David reacts to this because you know David didn't kill Saul. He didn't want to kill Saul, or he didn't want anybody to kill Saul. And then the guy that lied to David and said, "Oh, I killed him." You know, David did not like that either. Uh, so it'll be interesting here. I love the fact, though, Brian, look at this. Um, look, they uh, look, he said, look, they exclaimed to the king. Mm -hmm. You see that they, are, they called David the king here. This is the first time right here. This is great. This is cool. Sorry. Well, they I mean, remember, he's the imposter king. Ithbosheth was put in by you know, essentially the people of that area mm -hmm. proclaiming him king instead of, you know, doing it right. I, because, you know, he's Saul's son. But, hey, the prophet said, Saul, your family will no longer be in the line of kingship, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. It's going to see what happens, you know. But like Johnny said, they, they made sure he was dead. They, they These two boys cut his head off, put it in a little bag, kind of like... um. You know, like Achilles yeah. held it up to uh, <laughs> the giant why my, David. Why did my mind go right to seven with Brad Pitt? That was horrible. I'm sorry. Seven. That's a good horrible. movie, too. That's a good movie, too. Seven Sins. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's uh, interesting. It, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like Donnie said, drama. There's a lot of, there's probably a lot of uh, revenge mindset. Look, you just said the, the Lord has given you revenge, David. That's not necessarily true. We'll find out, right? Verse nine. We'll, are you ready? You could take your hand off the screen. Okay. <laughs> Just I'm interested <laughs> to see. I'm interested to see Donnie and Brian David's reaction here. So we'll see here. Yeah, it's well. Let's see it. Well, it will know. We'll find out if it's right or wrong. But David <laughs> said to uh, Rakeb and Bana, "The Lord who saves me from all my enemies." is my witness someone once told me 
Saul is dead, thinking he was bringing me good news, but I seized him and killed him at Ziklag. <laughs> Just said that. Yeah, boom. Almost kind of like a warning. Yeah. That's the reward I gave him for his news. How much more should I reward evil men who killed an innocent man in his own house and his own bed? Should I hold you responsible for his blood and rid the earth of you? Uh, what a man. David is the most righteous man ever. What a man. Well, I, he's pretty close. <laughs> well, that's a big statement, but he he's up there. I mean, this guy is just, he's a warrior. He's a poet. He's a leader. He's a fighter. But he's so just always taking the high road and just, uh, he just doesn't, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for. I just, I love David so much. He's a great leader. Mm -hmm. You know, he weighs in, he weighs the balance of, of what's going on. Not always for himself, right? He's not the best person, you know, every, every decision is not perfect, but when it comes to the people, like, this is why God anointed him. If you begin to look at all the things that happened, of course, David stumbles. He has some major catastrophes in his life. You know, basically rape, murder, it's coming up. But when it comes to the people, so many times, he mm -hmm. weighs in balance. What do I do? What's right? What's wrong? Is this just good? Is this bad? And then he makes a decision. He talks to Nathan. Anyway, all these things, and he's a good leader. That's why God made him king, because he wasn't some piece of garbage like Saul turned into. Okay, one more. So David ordered his or David ordered his young men to kill them, and they did. The two brothers, right? I, I called it I called it before we started reading nine. I said, Hey, remember the guy that came over and lied? And David didn't know he lied. He just said, Hey, I killed Saul. Yeah. And then David killed him for killing Saul. And David's sitting here going, hey, guys, hmm. I, I understand that I'm the anointed king, but he was sleeping in his own house. He's the king. The people made him the king. And you can't just go in and, you know, at the end of the day, Donnie and Brian, don't you admit, like, I feel like David's kind of sitting there going, guys, we're all Israelites. You, you just went into somebody else's house and cut his head off. Like that's again, that's attempt that that is premeditated murder. This is not battle. This is not death of battle. There's just a lot of premeditated murder going on here, and I don't think David likes it at all. Obviously, he doesn't. Sorry, I digress. One one comment here, and maybe you might have something, Donnie. But look at the these people are acting like what the world would do, right? I I I I become what I take. I'm going to raid this other king and take over, kill kill this other group of people and take over. David doesn't act like the world. Something on the inside of him. Remember, his heart is pointed toward the Lord. And it changed him as a kid into the to, to walking the straight and narrow or the right path. Now, he is a bloody king. He's killed thousands and thousands with war and, and so on. But something is pointing him. To the right direction that that's the godly way you know where he's yeah. like i'm not going to kill you don't need to kill this man let's just have a conversation let's 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 do it right and so i love that what do you what do you take on this donnie remember the last line in judges do you remember what that was yeah yes was everyone, great... everyone did right in their own eyes because there was no king ah uh... Mm -hmm. that's, that's still going on, and David's putting an end to it. And he sort of has to, because he knows he's the next king. And you don't exactly want people in your court, people near you as king, who want to do what's right in their own eyes, right? So you have to sort of get rid of them. Or who knows, they might do the same to you. I was you just know? going to say that. How do you trust... <laughs> <laughs> I ever see that show, uh, Marco. Yeah, ever see that show, Marco Polo? On so Netflix? good, love that show. I have, I have not yet. Oh, John, that's a great show. Oh but yeah. Anyway, there's a scene in it where Genghis Khan is. I think he's just won a battle, and the opposing army, the soldiers, they uh, they pretty much give up and say, "Okay, we'll we'll now serve you, Genghis." The, the great Khan, and 
Genghis kills them all. Because how can you trust soldiers who so easily flip from one side to the older other? You know, so but uh, just seeing it on on the screen gives it a more impactful, mm-hmm. like whoa. And it's the same thing going on here. You know, everyone's doing right in their own eyes, and David comes along as he was supposed to. You know, because at the people's request, the people were tired of everyone doing right in their own eyes. Yeah, they wanted a king to come along and enforce the law. And in order for that to happen Mm -hmm. cleanly, David has to get rid of the old order. Well, and, and, you know, the thing, too, is that that David's people, they're calling him the king. David is the anointed king. So if David is the king to these people, which he is, right, he's our king, right, now is where we trans... Uh, tell you know a time machine back to this time then you have to ask the king before you go cut somebody's head off you know where's that respect you have to go to king david and say king we will go to ish basheth's house and cut his head off for you would you like us to do that what would the lord want that's what they should have done here they, you know and then david said well let me go to god and ask and i'll get back to you thank you guys for the offer. Like, you know, David probably would have looked at him and said, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's nice of you. Let me go to God, see what he wants, and I'll get back to you guys. But no, they take it in, like Donnie Schenkel said, the end of Judges in their own eyes. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. You say that. Even nowadays, everyone wants rules and regulations and guidelines. I'm not talking about, like, you know, the laws in the U.S. I'm talking about everybody really wants laws from God. You know, mm-hmm. they want they want to, they want boundaries that they they set for themselves, and that's mm-hmm. a good thing. Like children need boundaries, so do we as people. And when and when we are wild and uninhibited and just do whatever we want, you know, uh-huh. whether it's drugs, sex, rock and roll, the whole nine yards, we get tired of that. You know, well, you it know, leaves us empty, Brian. Doesn't yeah. it leave us? No matter how much we party down and go to Vegas and sin and get off the narrow path, it's almost like we get more depressed, more empty, yeah. the more we live in the world. It's like that's why the narrow path, even though it's narrow, is by far the best path. Mm-hmm. It, it's where the joy is, the real joy. And I know sometimes, you know, we might step over that line, have that extra fifth margarita. But, mm-hmm. hey, the mm-hmm. straight and narrow is the boundary. And, and it keeps us, you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we need that. We want that really inside on the inside. Cause like Donnie said, that was a great point. We get, people get tired of living a life full of sin and selfishness. You know why? Because we can't be our own God. There's only one true God and we were created to serve and worship him. And when we worship and serve ourselves, oh, we can't handle that pressure. We can't handle that life. We don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. One uh, more. Let's, yeah, one yeah, more. Let me finish it here. So David ordered the young men to kill them, and they did. They cut off their hands and feet and hung their bodies beside the pool in Hebron. Then they took Ishbosheth's head and buried it in Abner's tomb in Hebron. I, I love how David buries the head to show respect. You know, and and not and, and like and here's what's so good about David, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, right, Brian and Donnie? It's it's not necessarily to show respect to Ishbosheth. I think David could care less. <laughs> David's burying Ishbosheth out of respect to the Lord, saying, "Lord, I'm going to bury him here." You know, um, out of respect for you. I, I just think that's really cool, Donnie. Yeah, you nailed it, man. <clears throat> yeah, I love how God put that in the Bible here, that David did that, because it shows us that even though David really had no connection with Ishbosheth, probably didn't even really like the guy, n- David knows he's he's he was supposed to be king. You know, he's like, I'm going to take time to bury his head and show respect. A, to just the Israelites as a people, and then B, of course, obviously, to the Lord. It's just really cool. 
I like what you said there, Brian, at the end. What did you say again? You said something about uh, can't be happy. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying you can't, we can't be, you, we're not happy when we're the king and our own God, when we become the God of our own life, you know, we can't rule ourselves. It's fun for a year, six months, maybe two or three, but it gets old and tired. Yeah, I really like that. Um, yeah, you can't have unpredictability within the community, you know. There can't be any, uh, at least from what I've seen, you know, people are happy whether they're poor or mm -hmm. it's the It's the unpredictable evil that's, you know, it's the guy who's, whose mind is corrupted because he's taking drugs or whatnot, just to give as an example. You don't know what he's going to do, you know, and... He's operating outside of the law. You know, he has evil flowing through him. And you just can't have happiness in that. But when we're grounded, when we're grounded in the law, when we're grounded in, in Jesus, you know, that's when, that's when true happiness comes along. And <clears throat> I wanted to share just one thing before we get into the chapter, mm -hmm. next chapter. I, uh, I read, I read this yesterday in the gospels and I just, was, uh, was mind blown. This is uh, this comes from Luke chapter six, verse forty-eight. He is like a man building a house, who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. This is Jesus's words. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house, and could not shake it. Mm. Mm because it had been well built. I think I got, I got, I got drawn to that verse. I think just cause there's, there's a weightlifter and you know, you hear well built, he's a well built weightlifter. He's a well built man. He's, a, he's strong in body. He's strong in spirit. He's strong in mind. And then as I was reading that, Ryan sends me a picture of eggs and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you gotta eat. Yeah. And proteins and build that foundation. But then I went on and I, I read a commentary. <clears throat> That's just quick. And it says, uh, this is the heart of this. If you are rooted in God, if you are rooted in Jesus, then you can withstand anything precisely because you are linked to that power that is creating the cosmos. You will be blessed at that deepest place and nothing can finally touch you. That comes from Bishop Barron's uh, Word on Fire Bible. And I just like the image of that. If you are rooted in God, if you are rooted in Jesus, if you obey his commandments, then you are part of something that created in Genesis 1-1. Mm -hmm. You are linked to that. And no matter how strong you think you may be alone, you are nowhere near as strong as you could be so if true. you... If you let Jesus into your heart, if you let God into your life, you may as a man can stand on your own feet, but if you got, if you allow God to enter your heart, you can fly, man. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can perform miracles. Nothing is impossible. You can walk you. like Peter. You can yeah. literally walk on water like Peter. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you learn that principle, when you discover what you are connected to and created from, you can literally live a fearless life. There ain't no devil in hell that can look at you wrong and scare you because you are plugged into the almighty power of the mm -hmm. king of kings and the creator of all things. That's a strong position. That's well said, Donnie. I was, uh, Donnie, to penny back off that, I was in a conversation the other day with somebody a friend and I'm not going to name names. And it was a really uh, deep emotional conversation. And he was telling me that um, in tears, he was telling me that he doesn't love himself and doesn't love himself like he, like he should. And he's struggling with himself and he thinks, you know, it's um, how he's constantly trying to, you know, read self, help books and see a therapist and 
trying to work on himself to love himself. And I didn't know initially how to respond. So I had to tap into my own self and really kind of almost, I was praying almost as he was talking of like, you know, Lord, give me the strength to know what to say here. Mm -hmm. Because what he was saying was very deep. And I looked right at him and I said, brother, you think I love myself? I, I, you, you, I, I looked at him, I said, I don't love me. I am insecure. I've, at times I've even been suicidal in my life. I was done drugs in my life to get away from me. Why do you think I was a drug addict? Why do you th think sometimes, you know, back in the day I drank too much. It was to escape me. Hmm. Even now as a Christian, five, five, I don't know if I love myself. You know, I go, but what I did was in 2016 is I laid my sword on the dirt ground and I laid flat face down and I gave my life to Jesus. Mm. And I live for him, not me now. I don't live for me. I live for him. That's good. And I don't know if I love myself now. As a Christian, I feel like because my love for God and because I live for him, capital H, therefore God then returns and works through me and I feel more, I feel joy in my life. I feel yeah. much happier, of course. I, I, I'm fulfilled with the water of Jesus. But I have to say, even now, do I love myself? I would say no. I would say no. I make mistakes all the time. I do things I highly regret. I find myself talking to myself in the shower of kind of getting mad at myself, even hitting myself. Um, I feel like I let people down, not on purpose, but on accident, and it just kills me inside. So do I love myself? I think the answer is no. But do I love Yahweh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, him, capital H? Um, the answer is yes. And I have more joy in my life because of that than I mm. ever would on self-help books. And so that was my answer to him, and I think it might have helped. Well, that's, that is the answer. Love Jesus. Love God. Yahweh. Holy Spirit. One more, a little more comment on that. This Ephesians 4, you know, it talks about the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. But it says, Paul says this, and I'll wrap it up. He says, he says, until we come to the, you know, those are all for the perfecting of the saints. He says, until we come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says, then no more are we children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and in a lie, you know, slight of men and in the cunning craftiness, you know, where they, they try to, they wait and deceive us. He says, but we speak the truth and love growing up in Jesus, who's the head, even Christ, where we are a whole body fitted, joined together in every way. Love, you know, it, it's this, it's this whole unit that we're together. Once we grow up and we realize that we're a body, we have our own part. You're connected with each other, with the, with the, the source, and you're no longer a child. You're an adult in Christ Jesus, strong, unshakable, and no, no out weird doctrine out there will move you around. But you're planted in the Word, and. Anyway. Lord works in mysterious ways, huh? Yeah, he does. Uh, let's, uh, I do have to get Liv to school. Um, so I can't read the next chapter, but we're, you know, good 35 minute show. Good chapter here. Good discussion. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to get in the truck and head to school when you can. Okay. You say hi to Donnie and Brian. Hi. Say hi, Donnie and Brian. Um, my turn to too shy. Mm -hmm. Hi. Oh. I live. Donnie and Brian say hi. But she's great. What grade is she in? Uh, she is in. Uh, she's in daycare. 
So she'll do kindergarten next year. Yeah. So, yeah, she's growing up fast. So, mm-hmm. begins in first grade. And, okay, I'll get you food right now. Um, That's a great study. Either either Donnie or Brian, if you guys want to uh, pray it out here from chapter uh, four of the New Living Translation, Second Samuel 4 is what we just read. Tomorrow we'll go five. Uh, from Genesis one one to now, we'll keep uh, we'll sure. keep it going. Sure, I can do it. Uh, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, man. Thank you for leading us into your Word this morning and showing us how, how, how we can we can honor you by honoring other people and loving others and learning about you and your Word and studying your Word and putting it on the inside of us and and, and coming together as brothers and. And just bulletproofing our lives with the gospel of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much. We just pray that we are a light in the world today. And we we conquer and overcome darkness. Destroy the works of the devil. Everywhere we go, use us. Be that shining light to everyone we meet. And bring in bring the words that we need to know. And what to say to us, Lord. We love you. So great. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Donnie Shankle, thanks for being with us again this morning. Love having you. And uh, we'll got to do it again tomorrow if you can, Donnie, 7.30. Uh, not tomorrow, but uh, I'll be here Saturday for you. Saturday, awesome. All right, Brian Knight, great work, great study, gentlemen. Everybody listening to the chat board, thank you. And Everybody listening to the recorded version, have a great day. Happy Thursday. God bless. And we'll see you guys back tomorrow.